since the military government of Niger assumed power in July 2023, leading to a drastic change in the geopolitics of the Sahel region, there have been talks from all over the world that Niger and the other military governments of Burkina Faso and Mali are simply replacing the West with Russia and China. This is because, since they came into power, the military juntas have distanced their countries from the West and drawn closer to Russia and China. Hence, the word is that countries in the Sahel are replacing one colonized for another. However, the military junta of Niger has just proved them wrong. One thing that should be understood about these military leaders is that they are different. From all the actions they have taken since they came into power, it is very clear that they value the sovereignty and independence of their country above all else, even if it means going against longtime partners. The military junta of Niger, General Tiani has just taken a bold step to confirm that he is committed to protecting the interests of Niger in terms of its resources. So, what exactly did he do? You see, since it arrived in Niger in 2008, the China National Petroleum Corporation has been in control of Niger's oil sector. Through its company PetroChina, China struck a deal with the Nigerian government to develop the Agadem oil field, which has an estimated reserves of 650 million barrels. As part of the deal, PetroChina invested in the construction of the Soraz refinery, located 460 kilometers away in the southern city of Zinder, and eventually led to Niger becoming an oil producer in 2011. According to the agreement, China holds a 60% stake in the refinery, which has a capacity of 20,000 barrels per day and mostly supplies the domestic market, while the government owns the remaining share. In 2019, China took a step further to construct the 2,000-kilometer oil pipeline between the Agadem field and the Beninese port city of Kadanu to expand oil production in Niger. Currently, the construction of the project is complete and Niger is set to produce 110,000 barrels of oil per day. No doubt, China invested these millions of dollars in Niger's oil industry to have a share in future revenue gotten from the sale of oil, which is not a bad thing. After all, the agreement is supposed to be mutually beneficial to both Niger and China. However, it does not change the fact that China has more control of Niger's oil than Niger itself, and the military government of Niger is not happy with this. So, on the 3rd of March, 2024, the military government of Niger signed two decrees that will ensure that two of Niger's major oil blocks are under the control of the government. The two oil blocks, areas where oil is found and extracted, are the Bilma oil block and the Agadem oil block, both of which were under the control of China's oil firm. Recall that the Agadem oil block was developed by PetroChina, and the company has a 60% stake in the field. However, the new decree grants Sonadep, Niger's state-owned oil company, substantial access and control over the Bilma oil block and the Agadem oil block. What this means is that unlike before, Niger will now be fully involved in the production of oil and the development of the oil sector. So, why did the military junta of Niger decide to take this decision? According to the director of Sonidep, Colonel Ali Sebu, the military junta of Niger, General Tiani does not have any issues with China, its current partners, and will ask for their services when and where needed. However, he said that Niger has its own local engineers and professionals that specialize in the extraction of oil, refinery, and development of petroleum products, and the government plans to utilize their services. Therefore, Niger will only seek the services of foreign partners when and where it is necessary. The director also added that regarding the expertise needed, it can be bought or rented, and it is up to the authorities in Niger to look for technical and financial partners to support the country. He added that the country is in another dynamic and level where it is Niger first before anyone else. In his own words, it is not good for a country to take itself hostage. I have nothing against these partners. They are very good and have helped us to produce, and perhaps we will continue to work with them on other aspects. And if there are any aspects we need their help, we will ask for it. Honestly, this is fantastic news, not just for Niger, but for Africa, because it's always been a question on our minds about why African governments always solicit the technical services of foreign countries. Meanwhile, 
There are people in their countries who went to school to learn the same thing and have no jobs. And even if the citizens do not have the technical know-how, what exactly is stopping the government from employing foreigners who have this knowledge to teach their citizens so that they no longer have to depend on foreigners' technical skills? Well, it's great news that the military junta of Niger is seeing this from this perspective and has taken the necessary step. It's time for African countries to stop depending on the West or any country at all for technical skills. Africa is blessed not just with mineral resources, but also with human resources. Africa is blessed with people who are smart, intelligent, and innovative, and it is high time that African governments start to take advantage of what it has. Instead of depending on foreign aid and foreign help, African governments should focus on supporting local innovation and technology. This is one major way that African countries can develop. The continent needs to start producing valuable products with its abundant resources, which it can sell in the international market. This is how the countries in the world grew to become what they are today. It's time to move on from just protecting African minerals to investing in innovation and technology with those minerals. This is similar to what is currently happening in Mali. Recall that in October, Mali signed a deal with Russia to build a nuclear power plant in order to solve its energy crisis. According to recent news, the construction will begin in the next two years, but the interesting thing is that the Malian military government made it a part of the deal that Russian experts in the construction of the nuclear power plant would begin to teach Mali's local engineers and those involved the technician know-how. And, according to the reports, these Russian instructors are now in the country, teaching Mali's engineers and construction the technical skills needed to construct a power plant. Just think about it. By the time Russia fulfills its end of the deal, if Mali decides to create multiple nuclear power plants, it can do so without calling in foreigners to do the job. Now, how did China take this news? Surprisingly, China took the news calmly, which is quite a change from what would have been expected if it were the West in its position. On April 8, China sent delegations to Niger, where they met with the junta, General Tiani, to clarify what the decree meant led by the Chinese ambassador to Niger, Zhang Fang, China expressed its commitment and desire to continue the partnership with Niger in its oil sector. After discussions with the junta, Zhang stated during the press briefing that China is satisfied with the rational friendship and fruitful cooperation between both countries. He revealed that Niger's military junta attached absolute importance to political and economic sovereignty, hence the reason for the decision. He also went on to reiterate China's contribution to the oil sector in Niger through the construction of the oil refinery and the 200 kilometer oil pipeline. Then he ended by saying that China remains committed to working with Niger to develop its oil sector. This is quite an interesting reaction from China. It was later reported that the meeting with Niger ended with Niger agreeing to allow China to be the exporter of its oil in the international market. Just see how everything was solved amicably. The reason why it went like this is because China, unlike the West, has a non-interference foreign policy and believes in mutually beneficial cooperation. Imagine if it was the United States or France that was in China's place. There is no doubt that they would not agree to the decision made by the junta and they would do all they could to ensure that the oil blocks remain in their control. This is the reason why China is gradually becoming the preferred partner of most African countries. Its commitment to nurturing partnerships based on mutual benefit and respect for sovereignty is a breath of fresh air in contrast to the one-sided beneficial agreements of the West. What are your thoughts? Let us know in the comments section below. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and share this video.